So hello and welcome to uh, another Budget Model Railways video. Uh, quite a bit to talk about this week, um, including this, uh, which is my um, Daypole rail bus. Not a bad little runner. So this is the Daypole uh, kit and this is the chassis of a Lima diesel shunter, the freelance shunter with the centre cab. And what happened, I did a video years ago when I started building it, effectively by shortening the underframe it fits the wheelbase and it looks much more like the original. Um, don't know if you can see in here if I zoom in, but I've added a driver figure and seat backs which are just folded blue card because the seats were blue in real life. I had some awful figures from China, oh sorry we've not got a very good focus there, um, some awful figures from China, <laughs> don't put them on focus, um, but I cut their awful legs off and they don't make too bad passengers. There we go, I'm trying to film without a tripod and talk and whatever. Um, slightly fictitious colour scheme because they did a half yellow end and a white roof but it does look very smart. Uh, that when it's in good mood runs backwards and forwards quite happily. It's um, not in a good mood because I'm filming, typically. Um, I suppose the kit cost me 10 quid. The chassis cost me actually about five, but they'll cost you a bit more than that at the moment to get. But I've been trying to get a Helgen one and they're going for 100. So I'm not too displeased with that for that money. So a few other changes. Big change at this end. The school's gone. Let's put a shot that way, look. Um, and being replaced with this large Metcalf factory. It is slightly too wide there, um, but it means I put quite a nice little scene there, little loading dock. And of course it means that the locos and trains really do just come in between the buildings. I don't need to do a bridge or anything like that. I've tidied up and sneaked a little loading bay in there as well. Now because of where this is, I can't get to that point. So what I did was I got this, um, florist wire that I had a big bundle of that paid a pound for, put a little loop super glued onto the point and you just do that. And I was fiddling with that and I was quite taken with that so I'm a little bit of a hypocrite because I did a rant last time about not worrying about the hand, hand of God and actually I've worked my way along and I've put them on all the points. And one of the reasons for that apart from the fact it's simple, cheap and effective, is that I've added a water crane there, I've got my crane there, and I just found I was bashing things, trying to get things uncoupled, uh, points moved and that sort of thing. I did then decide to experiment with this, which automatic uncoupling, using slithers of clear plastic approximately 55 millimeters by 10 millimeters. And initially that was really successful. And I was quite made up of it and thought, oh, there's me saying, I don't worry about the hand of God. And I had two here and I had one there and I had two here. And then I cho changed what wagons I was using and it stopped working. Because unfortunately, some coupling hooks have longer vertical parts than others. Some coupling hooks are slightly different heights to others. So what happened was I was very lucky initially, everything I was using was compatible. I mean, it's great fun when it works, don't get me wrong, but it's very fiddly. And if you're like me, you've got a huge variety of rolling stock. So if you're prepared to get all your couplings the same, this actually is quite effective, but I'm not gonna persevere with it. But I have done the points. So I have got semi hands free. Um, I could play around with the old Hornby uncouplers, but they don't fit some of this Lima track very well. So I've decided I'm quite happy using my coupling hook and I'll compromise and just change the points. A um, little bit noisy tonight, so we've got all the printers going. One of which, sneak preview, this is an O-16.5. Uh, so O gauge on 16 millimeter double O track, diesel shunter to fit the Hornby O40 body. Um, that's the first trial print. It's, a, it's an 11 hour print. So uh, let's see how that goes. So quite a bit done to the layout. And I've also done a lot of work on what locos will run utterly reliably over these points. I changed two points now to Pico. 
And so far I've found an interesting range of locos. So this is the old mainline N2. Um, slightly noisy, but a very reliable runner over the points, even at relatively slow speeds. I'll just take these wagons out of the way. Change my point from a rail bus. And we'll run that through. It's a very handsome loco. Um, and a good slow runner. I'm going to change the points here. And reliable over the points. And when I bought it, not very expensive. But you can see there that that runs quite happily. Now, in fact, if there's not any points involved, it will just crawl, which is quite remarkable. Um, but it doesn't do that over points. But that's one nice loco. And then what I've found is that my LMS 440 tender loco is pretty good, as is not the best way of treating locos, but I'm trying to do it one-handed. So this is a, a Hornby um, 060 tender loco. Somebody will know better than me what its proper name is. And that is also a very nice slow runner, reliably over the points, and it looks wonderful on the layout. So, two pretty good locos. Now I experimented with lots of others that are okay, but might occasionally stutter, which this one's just done. It's like working with children and animals, isn't it? However, the star of the show is this. Um, and what I'll do is I'll stop the video here and change the video so I can show you properly. So here we go, I'm back again now. So what this is, this is the Hornby J15. Um, this is the early BR one. Um, these are available at the moment at a discounted price from Kerno. So this cost me £70 plus £4 postage. Now that for me is a fortune, but it's something like 60 quid off the original price. So they are technically still within the bargain um, limitations, if you like. However, what it is, is an absolutely superb, slow, steady runner over the points, over the track work, and it looks just wonderful. It's a diminutive, small little 060 tender loco. Um, you just look at how quietly and smoothly that's going over even Hornby points. Now, these were only used on various lines. I don't worry about that sort of thing. So this is rapidly becoming one of my favourite locos. And I'm just going to have to take the camera away to uncouple. Um, put my uncoupling hook down somewhere. So what I'll do is I'll run it backwards and forwards instead, just to show you the running qualities. Um, so difficult for me because it is probably the most expensive loco I own, albeit at a very cheap price for what it was originally. Um, I've also, there we go. They are still available and I frankly couldn't recommend one enough, especially for a shunting layout. Um, they're not going to be so good thumping round and round and round layout because they're quite slow running locos. But that is just a wonderful looking loco. And I was down here the other evening for an hour shunting and it didn't miss a beat. Even at these sort of speeds, even over three or four points, it didn't miss a beat at all. Um, I'm just going to come in here because what I just want to show you that's it, pull it forward. So we'll change our points. So this is then going to run backwards over a series of points. And so some of which are the Hornby points, which aren't as reliable. Oh. Very smooth and quiet. And there we go. If I had to have just one loco for my layout, that would be the loco. Um, the detailing's not so fine that it's a problem because uh, you don't have to add the detail pack. Um, so yeah, that's a good little loco that. Uh, quite pleased with that. So there we go. 
There's locos I've got running. The rail bus I'm very pleased with. So that kind of weighs out the cost, I suppose, of the, the J15. Um, I've changed the end, which I'm very pleased with. The vast bulk of the layout still cost me next to nothing because these were buildings that I got for two or three pound from an exhibition, all three of those. Um, so compare, I think that's probably about 60 pounds worth of Metcalf kits that probably cost me about 10 quid. Um, I didn't pay for the baseboard. I didn't pay for the track. I didn't pay for the ballast mat. I didn't, <laughs> a lot of the other bits I bought at some point, but they were in my cupboard. So it's been a quick, easy project and it, it is being a lot of fun. Um, there's a few problems. So the steps to the signal box had to be taken out. They were fouling locos. I've still got some tidying up to do on the walls, but generally the look and feel of the layout now, I'm really pleased with. Um, and as a little project, I can just come down here and run some locos backwards and forwards. Yeah, I am, I'm, I'm quite pleased. And I've got effectively three or four really nice steam locos there. A couple of the diesels run all right, the 29s run all right. And they all look really nice when they're running backwards and forwards and they're all reliable. Um, so I'm gonna do a bit of work on the rolling stock next. It's quite a nice little scene down there with the people nattering by the fuel cans. These are any scale models again, um, items painted up. So there we go, uh, a lot happening this week, a lot happening. Um, hopefully next week I might try and get the tripod set up and we might try a running session. Um, but there we go, thank you as always for watching. The response to this layout has been really good, really strong, um, which is interesting. I've had more views on this than say the loft layout stuff. Um, perhaps more people are making little, little shunting layouts. Um, and there we go. Thank you as always for watching. Thank you for putting up with the odd dodgy camera angles and shaky cameras. Um, but uh, yeah, a lot going on. Uh, and uh, I hope you're enjoying your model railways and I hope you're, you're having fun. And I'll speak to you again soon. Hi, thanks for watching the video and for the nice comments. Uh, click on the left for a previous video in this series. Click on the right for another video you might enjoy. And please don't forget to click to subscribe, like, comment, etc. Thanks again.